אורח הכבוד שלנו היום, ה-keynote speaker, הוא ג'יימס קרידלנד, עתידן מומחה רדיו שמרצה, מייעץ, מקשר בין תחנות ואנשי רדיו בכל העולם, הגיע במיוחד מבריטניה כדי לשים את אותו פלוס שדיברנו עליו ליד ה-FM ולספק לנו סקירה מאירת אוזניים לגבי מה שצפוי לנו בתחום הרדיו בעתיד הקרוב. מיסטר ג'יימס קרידלנד, פליס. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you. It's, I'm very pleased to be here, and uh, I look forward to a very, uh, a very interesting day. Um, I have a beautiful picture of Tel Aviv, which you will see in just one second. Uh, it's beautiful, I promise you. Um, if you're on Twitter, by the way, uh, that's me. I'm James Cridland, um, and uh, I believe that the hashtag today is FM+. Plus. That's F-M-P-L-U-S. Um, I'm from the UK, uh, as you've just heard, uh, and in the UK, radio still looks like this. At Earl's Court in London, the radio industry lays out its shop window to the world. The 18th National Radio Show, it was opened by Vice Admiral Lord Mountbatten on Wednesday. The show is being held at a time when the radio industry has reached an all-time peak in production. with an annual output exceeding 85 million pounds in value. Look at the sizes of those iPods there. Good British iPods. Um, I'm a radio guy. Uh, I've worked in radio all my life. Um, I was young once. This is, um, this is a bit of proof. Um, I was the evening presenter on this radio station uh, in Yorkshire in England. Um, and I've worked in radio for the last 24 years. Um, I worked for the original Virgin Radio in London. I looked after what they did online uh, and also what they did on new platforms as well. Um, I worked at the BBC, which is a small broadcaster in London that I hope some of you have heard of, um, redoing how they did online radio, working on this, the iPlayer, and uh, on what became the radio player as well. Since then, I've been working for uh, my own uh, website, uh, which is a media portal uh, in the UK. It's very good. Um, and also a bunch of uh, other companies uh, across the world as well. And I call myself a radio futurologist because I've been looking at the future of radio for some time now. I've traveled all across the world, uh, places like Japan, Australia, Canada, and Ghana, to learn what different countries are doing with radio. And here's what I've learned about the future. But first, I'd just like to look at what's happening in the world right now. Because a lot of people say that younger people are tuning away from the radio. They say that young people are no longer using radio at all. Now, this isn't true um, anywhere in the world, actually. Young people are still listening to the radio. Um, in the US, in the UK, across the EU, young audiences still tune in to the radio every week, and the figures are just a percentage point or so below the figure for all adults. So it isn't true to say that young people are no longer tuning in to the radio, which is good if you're a radio futurologist. However, it is true that younger audiences stay tuned in for the radio for less time, in many, in many places significantly less time. So some radio broadcasters say that this is nothing new and that figures historically show that as we grow up, we listen to the radio more. But the figures that we're beginning to see of this generation seem now to show that radio has less of a place in younger audiences' hearts and radio doesn't recover as we grow older. So if younger audiences are spending less time tuning into the radio, What can the radio business do about that? How should radio change in order to remain relevant to the younger generation? And what opportunities does this give us uh, in radio uh, for the future? So today I'd like to talk about seven things for radio's uh, future. And I'm going to start with something that we've already heard uh, twice so far today, the platform, how we broadcast radio. And this is the thing that we argue about the most, I think. Um, is the future uh, the internet, 3G, 4G? Is the future satellite radio? Or is it HD, or is it DAB, or DAB plus? 
We spend hours and hours, days and days, arguing about the relative merits of AAC encoding or frequency bands. Um, we think that making a choice about the one platform for the future of radio is important. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is that it's all just radio. Let me tell you what I think the future of radio is, the future of the radio platform. It's not FM, but it's not the internet, and it's not DAB, and it's not satellite. It's all of those things. Any one of those platforms isn't the future. The future is all of them. I believe that radio has a multi-platform future, and actually, in many places, radio has a multi-platform present, the right platform for the right person right now. Um, in the UK, if you have a look at how people tune into radio in the UK, only 62% of all hours listened to the radio is done on an FM or AM radio. Only 62%. So audiences are moving away from AM and FM to other platforms. So let me tell you what, the, what they are in the UK. Every market is different. But in the UK, we broadcast radio on another three mass market platforms. Uh, radio is available through the television. This is my kitchen. Um, and the TV is a great place to put radio um, because, generally speaking, it goes into rooms where you don't have a radio. Um, and it looks quite pretty as well. Um, in the UK, you can get from 25 to 125 channels of radio on your television, depending on how you get your TV. Then we use DAB. Now, DAB, DAB means lots of additional choice, and we've already heard th this morning about the benefits of additional choice. Let me show you what that means in terms of um, the UK. And a typical listener in the UK... I won't choose London here because London's large and, um, and different. So I'll choose Coventry. Coventry is a, a city with, I guess, about a million people who live there. Um, it's uh, the, the city that's furthest away from the sea uh, in the UK. Um, and this is the amount of choice that you have on an FM, AM radio uh, in Coventry. So we have national radio stations, we have regional radio stations and local radio stations. So this is the amount of choice that you have on your FM or AM radio uh, in the UK, um, in Coventry. Now see the amount of additional choice you have with a DAB radio. It's quite a lot. So this additional choice is all possible with DAB. Works exactly the same as a typical radio. Goes in your car, goes in your house, and so on. It's almost now impossible to buy a radio in the UK without DAB on it. And, th and a third of all new cars have DAB built in already as well. And then there's the internet. Now, we've invested as an industry to make sure that internet radio is simple, straightforward, and just works. And I'll talk a bit more about the internet uh, in a bit. But which do you think is the most popular way of listening with these three additional uh, platforms? Um, let's do this with a show of hands rather than the uh, exciting buttons that you have access to. Um, so let's see who thinks that radio through the TV is the next most popular. A show of hands. We have three hands going up, four hands. Who thinks that DAB is the next most popular? Okay, about four hands. One person has voted twice so far. <laughs> and who thinks the internet is the most popular? Most people's hands go up, and most people are wrong. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? It turns out that DAB is the most popular because it's portable. It works like a radio, and it's free to listen. And you get it through more than one device as well. But looking at this, you can also see that it's, it's important that all of these platforms are popular in terms of tuning into the radio. Different platforms appeal to different people. So if I look at two different radio stations in the UK, these are both radio stations that are national, they're both broadcast in exactly the same way. They're not on FM AM, but they are on the rest. So let's take a look at how people tune into these. The first, Six Music, you can see lots of people tuning in on DAB, um, quite a lot of people tuning in on the internet for this particular station. 
Um, six Music is aimed at 40-somethings. It's aimed at people like me. One Extra, though, is an urban radio station. It's aimed at people probably between 10 and 20, people who probably don't own a radio. Um, and you can see the difference in how people tune into that radio station. So TV does particularly well for that audience, maybe because they're doing their homework in their bedroom, maybe because they don't own a radio in their bedroom, but they do own a TV. So it turns out that different people tune into different content on different platforms. So I think we can forget about chasing one unique platform because multi-platform is the right platform. Our job as broadcasters is to make sure that our content is available on the right platform for the right audience. The platform itself, I don't think, matters as much as we think it does. The most important thing is that people get your content on a platform they want to use. So that's why I say the future of radio is multi-platform. So having fixed the, con uh, the platform, let's sort out the content, because the content might be interesting. And I think for those of us that make radio, multiple platforms is brilliant news. Let's have a look at Australia, for example, where they've used DAB and online radio to make new creative opportunities for everybody that makes radio. They've added temporary radio stations for special events like the Melbourne Arts Festival um, or a pink concert tour. These are very short-run radio stations that are great ways of earning more revenue from advertisers and great ways to play with new format for radio stations. In the UK, stations are adding additional branded experiences as well. Um, Smooth Radio is a radio station aimed at 40-somethings and it has two additional radio stations that help its brands grow on online uh, through the TV uh, and over DAB. Uh, Smooth 70s is a radio station that plays more music from their audience's favorite decade. And a temporary radio station that runs at the end of the year uh, called Smooth Christmas, um, which plays, you can probably guess what Smooth Christmas plays. But similar things are happening in Austria with Krona Hit and with NRJ across Europe. This is a great way of expanding your brand by adding more choice to the people who tune in to your radio station. But let's talk about music uh, for a minute because 30 years ago, if I wanted to listen to my favorite uh, music, then either I had to spend a lot of money on records and cassettes or I had to tune into the radio. Um, I was at school, I didn't have a lot of money, so therefore I tuned into the radio, and it was brilliant, because the radio DJs played me brand new songs from my favorite artists that I couldn't otherwise hear. They were in touch with them, they told me what they were doing, and as a fan of, um, as a fan of some of the artists, the best way for me to connect with what those artists were doing was through the radio, because the DJs knew exactly what was going on. Now, as a music fan, I think that things have changed a bit. If I want to hear brand new songs from my favorite artists, I can simply look at their YouTube page or listen to Spotify. Artists can send me an email when they release anything. If I really want to find out what Lady Gaga is doing today, I can just follow her on Twitter. And I'll be connected to her 24 hours a day, learning exactly what she's doing and where she's going. The radio really has less of a part to play here. And you know, young people don't use Spotify or Deezer or Pandora or many of these services. Um, actually, most of them use the world's, the world's second largest social network uh, to get their favorite music. The world's second largest social network isn't Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter or anything else. It's YouTube. By far the most popular way for young audiences to find music is YouTube, and it's amazing uh, what's on there. If you try finding uh, this complete album on Spotify or anything legal, um, then that's uh, really difficult, but it's up there on YouTube. My taxi driver yesterday, as I was coming back from the center of Tel Aviv, um, he discovered that I came from London, and he said, ah, London, Elton John is from London. <laughs> He's not, but I said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I love Elton John, he said. And he reached down to his iPhone, um, connected it to the uh, in-car hi-fi, 
went to YouTube and started playing the Elton John. <laughs> but I thought that was very interesting, that he would instantly think of YouTube as a place to find new, uh, the, the music that he wanted to have listened to. And you know, as young audiences have changed the way that they find new music, so radio stations are changing um, in terms of what we broadcast, because more and more now, radio stations are, um, are uh, w relying on things like automation and playout systems, and we market ourselves as um, today's best music mix, um, for example, uh, the number one hit music station, more music variety. We promise 10 great songs in a row, sometimes even more. Uh, music is no longer radio's unique thing. So sure, we are still close to artists and record companies, and there are still a few radio presenters that really know what they're doing. Um, but um, music uh, programming has taken that away, that choice away from most of the radio presenters now. So if we think we're close to music in the radio business, we shouldn't forget that our audience is close as well. And when they listen to their own 10 great songs in a row, from YouTube or Pandora or Spotify, they get a better, more relevant choice for them, and they get something that radio can't compete with, which is the skip button. If radio is going to be famous for something in the future, I would ask you whether it should be famous for being something that just plays music a bit less good than YouTube without a skip button. That, to me, is not a great future for where radio is headed. So I think we have to do more than just music to survive. So if we're not going to focus on music, at least not just focus on music, because music is still important, what should we be focusing on? I think radio is a great medium. And it was said earlier that communities, both local communities and communities of common interest, uh, are very important to radio's future. And I think live radio can offer those communities a shared experience as well. Instead of blindly focusing just on music and what Lady Gaga did by rereading her tweets, radio can bring communities together, sharing stories and sharing experiences. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about very um, arty programming that sounds very clever but brings in no audiences because that doesn't help anybody. I'm talking about, um, I'm also, by the way, not talking about taking music off the air. But I'm talking about adding things to your radio station to make them more relevant. This is a good example. This is a radio station in Canada. Um, it's in a small city in Canada called Edmonton. And now radio um, is quite interesting. It's a brand new radio station. It's only been in, in Edmonton for a couple of years. And when you tune in, it sounds like a great music station, but you also have an awful lot of interaction from the audience there. They get involved in anything from choosing the music to sharing stories about how they're preparing for the big hockey game and what they're doing over the weekend, and sometimes even what they're having for lunch. Um, if you're a radio presenter on this radio station, it's your job to involve your audience, and they reply to every single tweet. They reply to every single text message. They reply to every single SMS message. If you want to tweet them now, you can. I promise they'll reply. They really hate it when I do that. Um, <laughs> In the first year of broadcasting, this radio station replied to over one million SMS messages, personally, by hand. Um, this station, which interacts with its audiences really well, came from nowhere to be number one in their market for their demographic. Um, here's another example from uh, Japan. Japan's an amazing place. It's um, so technologically different. Um, let me show you what I mean by the by the technology that they have. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the loo in my hotel room. It has a button there for boys and a button there for girls. Uh, I tried both of them. I couldn't work out what they did. Um, this is a radio. Um, and you'll notice that in a place where technology is the future, um, this is still an FM AM radio, but their FM dial is rather larger um, than uh, we typically see uh, in Western Europe. And when you tune into 80 on your FM dial, this is the radio station you get. Tokyo FM, 80 point love. Now, 
Tokyo FM, that, that famous uh, frequency, 80-point love on your dial, which I love. Um, th this is what they're doing. They have a radio program called School of Lock, and it's on quite late. Um, and it's a show for uh, younger audiences. And what they've focused on is making that a community for their younger audience. So instead of, um, instead of just being a two hour long show, it's now a 24 hour long community. Um, and you can see that they have mobile phone apps as well as uh, a great website which is full of community features and things like that. Again, getting closer to their community of audiences. And let me show you another example. This is um, from a radio station that I once worked for back in the 1990s for the young people in the audience, which of course is most of you. Um, this was a letter. Um, we used to send this through the post. Um, it's, it's printed on paper, which is some kind of dead tree thing. Um, now when a listener asked for a request by letter, we would reply, and in this case we're replying to say no. Um, there's been a big response, it says here, but it was, wasn't possible to include your choice. However, maybe you'd like to try again. Um, this radio station, partially because of the way that we treated our audience, went from a number seven to a number one uh, in the market. And if you think this looks slightly old-fashioned, I was in the BBC only a couple of weeks ago near the BBC Tamil service to see a pile of these on the desk. Uh, postcards are still very important to some audiences. So social media makes responding to our audiences taking part with our community of listeners so much easier. So give your presenters the tools and, and make them involved in that. And let's talk about the user experience too of radio because particularly for younger audiences, this has never been more important. Our user experience for radio used to look like this, um, an old radio dial. That's how we used to tune in. Now in the new exciting world of multi-platform radio, our user experience looks like this. Frankly, it's not much better. With this, you have to know what platform you want to, to tune into before you find the content that you want to end up tuning in. It's a really counterintuitive way of selecting content. And we in the radio industry seem not to care too much uh, that we're giving our audience a really poor user experience. Um, mobile phones, many mobile phones have FM on them, but they use the beautiful color screen of your mobile phone to put up an FM frequency and that's it. This looks really old-fashioned um, when you compare it to some of the other things you can do on your mobile phone as well. And remembering a frequency to tune into a radio station is increasingly getting a very old-fashioned way uh, of running a user interface. If you compare that to how television works now, Sky or Canal Plus uh, in Europe or DirecTV in the, U in the US has spent millions and millions of dollars on getting their user interface really easy, simple, and straightforward. Some of the channels on here are paid for, some of the channels are free. Some of the channels come from one satellite, some of the channels come from another. We don't know because we don't need to know. It's just a simple, straightforward way of finding content. So if radio's future is a multi-platform future, as I believe it is, then radio's future also needs multi-platform radio, a simple, straightforward way to navigate through the content available on a radio, whatever that platform might be. Um, and this is an interesting prototype of a hybrid radio that does exactly that. Um, this is produced as part of the Radio Player project in the UK. You tune in by station name, not by frequency, um, and if a station isn't available on FM or DAB, it chooses the internet stream automatically. If it is on FM or DAB, it'll save you the bandwidth and tune in on that instead. And as you can see, when you tune into a radio station on whatever platform, you get additional information on the screen, um, which all comes through the online connection. So that's more opportunities for the radio station, um, more opportunities for advertisers, and a much better user experience for the listener as well. I think that this type of user interface is where radio should be going. And I think if FM radio still looks like this uh, in the future, then FM radio's days might not be as healthy as they could be. Which is why we as radio broadcasters, I think, need to think m about more than just audio. More and more, we need to think about how radio will look 
as well as sounds. And radio stations in places like Poland and Italy have made their entire radio stations fully visual as well as audio. Um, RTL 102.5's radio station in Italy adds music videos and beautifully designed studios that look as good as they sound. Um, this is a radio station that looks great and sounds even better. Have a quick look at this. We are young, i fan su RTL 102 e 5 in miseria e nobiltà. Sì. E oggi conta in versione Don Matteo. È bravo, lo sa che quando uso sto cappottone lungo nero eh, per questo basco. Il basco è proprio Don Matteo. Molto, molto. Now that's a beautiful, beautiful radio studio and it's not just um, a couple of cameras slung into an otherwise ugly radio studio. This is something specifically built um, for the TV uh, and looks really smart. Let me show you a couple more examples um, from the BBC in the UK. This is Radio One's chart show, um, now visualized with music videos um, and more. Um, I think we need to be careful when we do this because um, otherwise we fundamentally change what radio is all about. Um, when we add pictures. We need to stop radio presenters from noticing that there are cameras in the studio and thinking that they're somehow producing a crap TV show instead of a great, instead of a great radio show. But I think what's very interesting here is that as an experience, it's much more interesting for younger audiences that want to consume this because for them, music has always been a visual medium as well as an audio medium. Now, these cameras are always running. Um, in uh, some of these uh, studios. They work automatically whenever somebody's talking. So there isn't a vision mixer, it's all completely automatic. And this is really good for you if something happens. Um, this is a bit from Channel 4 News last week, um, where our Deputy uh, Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, said something very interesting. Um, and, uh, but he said something very interesting on the radio. Now, on the radio, we would normally a TV channel will go, well, there aren't any pictures, so we're not going to do anything with it. Um, this is the Deputy Prime Minister, and he's going into the radio station. And you'll notice, um, once he gets inside, that, oh, look, really nice cameras um, and um, very understated advertising from the radio station. You'd never, you'd never guess what that radio station was called, would you, uh, looking at that? Um, And the only reason that the TV cameras ended up using so much of this is that the video was available to them. And they wouldn't have used all of this amount of video if it was just audio. So really useful stuff. And let me show you one more example. This is from a radio station from um, just a couple of weeks ago. It's um, a news talk station called, um, called Radio 5 Live. And again, this runs full automated webcams through its output. Um, watch this to see what happens when they had a guest that they weren't expecting in the studio. It relates to legislation. And what about... Uh, sorry, did you want to say something? Sorry, then? I just saw a mouse just come up. Oh, my God! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how horrible! Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm live on the radio squealing and saying how horrible and kneeling on my chair because there's a mouse in the room. Oh, no. I thought you were unwell, but that clear, clear, I'm so glad you're not unwell, Mike Linnell. Um, ooh, how horrible. I'm going to leave it there because I'm not sure I can continue interviewing in a serious manner when I know there's a mouse scurrying around my feet. Uh, so, so if you're planning a new feature, if you're working on an OB or thinking up a new format, think how it'll look as well as sound. Train your staff on video as well as audio. Uh, and get some decent cameras into the studio as well and make sure they're always on because you never know who will visit and you never know how much additional marketing you can get from that. Um, I'd also like to talk about the benefits of working together. And it's great to see so many people here together from different parts um, of the uh, Israeli radio industry. Our listeners and our advertisers now think about, not just about individual radio stations against other individual radio stations, but also radio against other platforms as well. Radio against Spotify, radio against YouTube, radio against a number of new things that are taking your audience away. So it really helps our industry if we talk together, if we, work, uh, if we talk about the benefits of radio, not just the benefits of our own radio station. Um, all of radio will benefit if we do that. Let me show you a TV ad. This is a TV ad from uh, the UK's Capital FM. Music. Turn it up. 
It's Capital FM. Makes you want to move. When you have a great melody, a song can last forever. I love it. When a beat goes boom, boom, it's Capital FM. You could be from anywhere in the world, but you play that one song and everybody feels exactly the same. People all know your song because of Capital FM. It's crazy. There's a song for every mood possible. First thing in the morning and last thing at night. Listen up, London. Tune in. The middleman between me and my fans is the radio. Without the radio, a hit would not be a hit. Capital FM rocks! The biggest tunes, the biggest artists, all in one place. 95.8 Capital FM, London's hit music station. Here we go. Now, notice how positive that ad was about radio, not just about capital. Working together, getting our positive message out about radio is a great benefit uh, to us. And secondly, working together is, almost, is, is also important when it comes to re not reinventing the wheel, not doing things that we've already done before. In the UK, we've seen great benefit from all of us working together on a number of things, particularly all working together on the user experience for radio. Because we looked at internet radio and we thought, well, it's a really messy, messy user experience. These are some of the players um, of uh, internet radio. And some of these radio stations used Windows Media Player, some of them used Real Player, some of them had volume controls in their players, some of them didn't. Um, every single radio station had a different radio player online which worked in a different way. It was a real mess, really confusing to audiences. And since all radio stations were spending time building things like this, we didn't really focus on the other content that a website should have as well. We also noticed that there are problems on the horizon from people that, frankly, don't really care very much about us. Third-party aggregators, people like TuneIn um, and, um, uh, and people such as that, they don't understand what our local market needs. They take revenue away from us in terms of our website and in terms of our players. And frankly, they don't care about radio because they're in it to make mobile phone apps and they're in it to make websites and they're not in it to benefit radio as an industry. TuneIn looks lovely and works really well and has a lot of people using it. Um, here's another one that looks slightly less lovely. This is actually a radio website in the UK that quite a lot of people used to use for tuning into the radio. Um, it's not a great experience. It links straight to the streams so that radio stations don't get any brand recognition uh, or any opportunity to sell advertising. Um, and particularly, no brand uh, re recognition is important for our research. And here's uh, an example from Holland. Um, this is um, a, a collection of logos, as you can see, um, with some advertising um, and with um, their own player, Netherlands.fm's own player. Um, this is fascinating because, again, uh, this, this website is um, missing, uh, is, is not linking to radio stations' websites, not using radio stations' players. Um, but also, the guy that runs this, who's a nice man called Jim, um, he's now beginning to charge radio stations for their logos to be on this page. Over 20% of all radio listening in the Netherlands comes through this page online. And that's quite scary, because if we're not in control of this, then we have no control over whether Jim might decide one day that he doesn't like the Sky Radio uh, output and wants to put something else on there. He's got a lot of people tuning in. 20.5 million listeners, or stream starts, um, they're not the same, but he seems to think they are, um, in just one month. That's quite scary. So we need to be in control of our destiny here, which is why we concentrated a lot on Radio Player. It's a consistent, standard user experience, which allows radio stations to do some very interesting things in the frame underneath. But you'll notice in the top of all of these players, you'll notice it looks exactly the same. It works in a consistent way. So here's an example. If I go to Radio 2, for example, I can click on the Listen Live button. 
on the top of the screen and I get the radio player playing Radio 2. So it's replaced the Radio 2 web player. And I listen to Jules Holland for a bit and it's very nice and then I decide that I want to find something else. Maybe I'll find some sport. So I do a search for sport and it comes up with radio stations that might play sport. But I decide, no, I'm not interested in sport actually. I'm going to go into my presets and my presets include a private radio station, LBC, that I showed you earlier. I'll tune into that. So it's a simple, straightforward radio player that allows people to skip between stations and find new ones. It's had very nice uh, coverage from people like The Economist, um, who say that we are getting our act together, uh, which is nice. But more importantly, it's also had really good audience figures as well. In the first full year of radio player, by working together on one simple radio player, we've increased our audience by 37% for internet radio. And that's really important. So working together really helps. And finally, given that we've just talked about measurement here, let me just um, finally talk a little bit about how we measure our audiences. Um, first, here's how it works in the UK. Rajar, again, is jointly owned by all of the radio industry. Rajar awards a contract to a research company to analyze radio audiences. And um, I sat down with a beer and worked out uh, how Rajar works. Um, basically, if you're interested, it has a panel of 100,000 uh, people who it talks to uh, every year. Um, it's 10 times larger than TGI here, but then we have 10 times the amount of people. So it's probably about right. It uses a diary, both a paper diary and an online diary. And you write down when you tuned into the radio, where you were, and um, how you tuned in as well, so to get some um, information on platforms as well. Now, some countries use PPM, which is a little device that you carry with you. Um, Norway, for example. Now, Norway is interesting because it uses the same PPM for television consumption as well as radio. So it could mean that radio benefits from TV ad spend since it's now bought and sold in exactly the same way using exactly the same numbers. In Canada, they use a PPM and, pa and panel-based research, so they use both of them together. PPM in the cities, like Vancouver here, uh, panels uh, in the rest of the country. In Australia, uh, they only use diaries and they publish figures for the uh, larger uh, cities. Um, and in Switzerland, well, Switzerland are awfully patriotic. You'll know that, that Switzerland make great uh, timepieces. Uh, and so, of course, in Switzerland, they measure radio listening uh, using watches, uh, which is fantastic. So what should we be doing in terms of measurement? I don't have the complete answer, but here are my thoughts uh, on it. I think, firstly, I'm not entirely sold on a PPM or on a watch. I don't know how those devices know that I'm awake, but I haven't got out of bed yet. Now, for me, that was half an hour before I had my daughter. That was half an hour of radio listening that a PPM would simply miss because I hadn't got out of bed, got dressed, put the PPM on. I don't know how it works in the shower either because I don't know about you, but I don't wear a pager in the shower. I also don't know how it works in terms of headphones. Uh, as well, and lots of people tune into radio during the day at work using headphones. I also believe that since multi platform is radio's future, we need to make sure that we measure radio across platforms. And I do think it seems old fashioned, but I think that a diary system like we use in the UK um, is a pretty good one because it measures all radio however you end up tuning in. And I've yet to hear actually a better system that's as cheap and as straightforward to use as a diary. But I'm very open to find out more. That said, I do believe that the internet could be a special case because internet radio figures can be worked out using every single piece of data. No need for panels actually looking at your server logs. And a global system needs a global way of measuring it. It makes no sense Israel measuring it in one way, France measuring it in another way, the UK measuring it in another way, and America measuring it in yet another way. That clearly doesn't work. So I think we should all work together on a standard way of measuring internet radio 
so that countries who sell advertising on internet radio separately, like the US and stations in Turkey and the UK, for example, all have comparable figures. I think um, there's a company called Triton who have the right methodology. They're already in place in the US and Canada. It could be that there are other organizations as well. So in conclusion, the platform. Stop worrying about it. It doesn't matter. Just be on the right platform for your audience. The content. Please don't just focus on music and what Lady Gaga is doing. Focus on talent and shared experience and communities are the heart of what we do. The user interface is becoming more important, so don't ignore what that does. And radio is becoming multimedia, so think about that when you're making radio. Speak with one confident radio voice working together with your competitors, and don't forget to measure what we do. If we get all of that right, the future of radio is bright. The, future's radio, the future of radio is bright for all of us, for the people who work with us, for our advertisers, and our listeners. And if we can make all of them smile, then we've done a fantastic job. Thank you for your time today. Thanks. <laughs>